I'm Rob Tuck from the Emmanuel Community United Methodist Church, and I'd like to welcome you to Once Upon a Bible Time. Today's story is called A Hero's Forgives. Hi, Evie, Grandpa said through the computer screen. What have you and Eddie been up to today? We've been doing vacation Bible school, Grandpa. We've been learning about the heroes in the Bible. Well, that's exciting, said Grandpa. There are a lot of people in the Bible. Sometimes they act just like regular people. Sometimes they do things wrong and make mistakes, but sometimes those regular people act like heroes, and that's really great. It reminds me, even though I'm just a regular old man, sometimes makes mistakes, I can be a hero too sometimes. What Bible, what Bible hero did you learn about today, Grandpa asked. We learned about Joseph and how his brothers sold him to be a slave, but then later helped him and forgave him. They were glad when Joseph could help them because there wasn't any food at their house. Joseph was a hero because he was forgiving towards his brothers and even though they had really really been mean to him, Evie was proud to remember Joseph's superpower. Maybe Joseph learned a little about forgiveness from his father. Do you know anything about his father Evie? Well I know his name's Israel. That's right Grandpa confirmed. Israel is the name God gave him later in life. His parents named him Jacob. Evie continued, and he loved Joseph more than all his other sons. I hope Mom and Dad don't love Eddie more than me. Do they, Grandpa? No, Evie. Your Mom and Dad have lots and lots of love for both you and Eddie. Families were different in Bible times. Do you remember our story about Ruth and Naomi? After their husbands died, Ruth and Naomi didn't have anyone to take care of them. Sometimes in Bible times, men would marry more than one woman because it was too difficult for women to find food and shelter and protect themselves because they didn't have a husband. Israel had two wives, and that may have influenced how he felt about the twelve sons. Would you like to hear the story? Yes, please, nodded Evie. Once upon a Bible time, Grandpa began, there was a man named Israel. He had tricked his older brother Esau, and he was running away to escape him. Esau was a big guy, and Israel was afraid. By cheating his brother, he had made an enemy. Israel traveled to the home of a distant relative, Laban. He hoped that to live there and safely for a while. As he approached the house, he saw a young woman at a well. He helped her get water for the flock of sheep she was tending. What is your name, he asked. I'm Rachel, she answered. My father is Laban and lives nearby. I'm on my way to see Laban, Israel said with surprise. My mother's a relative of his, and I need a place to live for a while. I'm sorry to interrupt, Grandpa, but there are a lot of sheep in the Bible, aren't there? There aren't many sheep anymore, though. Evie thought sheep looked cute, but she didn't know anyone who had a sheep. Well, it's not common for people to keep sheep where we live, Grandpa explained. But there are still lots of places where there are shepherds and sheep, and in Bible times, Selling wool and meat from a sheep was a good way to earn a living. Now we pay people to do all kinds of jobs like caring for people in the hospital or fixing computers or delivering pizzas. So we don't see so many shepherds in our town. Oh, said Evie, I wish there were a few more sheep where we lived. Rachel looked at Rachel took Israel to her home and introduced him to Laban and her older sister Leah. Laban was very happy to have another set of strong arms to help work the farm. He said Israel could stay as long as he liked. Rachel and Israel spent lots of time together over the next few weeks and became really good friends. One day Laban took Israel aside and said, you're a big help and a hard worker. You're a good man, but just because you're a relative doesn't mean you shouldn't work for free. I should pay you for your work. Israel said, you know what I'd really like? Let me work for you for seven years, and then I'll marry Rachel. I love her. Levon knew Israel would be a good husband for Rachel, who loved him as well. He agreed to the bargain. For seven years, Israel worked hard, but the years seemed like only a few days because he knew he would marry Rachel at the end. Why did they have to wait so long to get married? Seven years was a long time. I wouldn't wait that long, Evie declared. Well, Evie, Israel had left his home without any money or land or sheep or anything. How could he pay for all the things the family needed? 
by working for Laban, you can save up and be ready to start a home with Rachel. Oh, I guess that makes sense. But you'll never guess what happened next, Evie. After seven years were up, Israel reminded Laban of his promise. Laban gave a big wedding feast, and afterwards, Israel went home with his bride, who was covered with veils and finery. Of course, it was dark, because it was nighttime, but Israel imagined a surprise in the morning we realized the woman behind the veils had not been Rachel at all, but then her older sister Leah. He had been tricked. Israel went to Laban. What have you done? I've worked for seven years for Rachel, and I'm still not married to her. Why, why have you tricked me? I never loved Leah, and now she's my wife. Laban explained, it's not right that the younger daughter be married until the older sister is also married. I will let you marry Rachel too. But you have to have work another seven years for her. Israel did that. He worked for another seven years because he loved Rachel very much, but he never loved Leah that way. Leah and Israel had lots of children together, but Rachel didn't have any children. Finally, when they were already ten sons and one daughter, Rachel had a baby boy, and she named him Joseph. Oh, Evie cried, that's the son, isn't it? That's the favorite one, with the coat. Yes, Grandpa, said. Does that help you understand why Israel loved Joseph so much? It was because he loved Joseph's mother so much. I bet Israel was super mad at Laban and Leah. He would have never spoken to them again. He shook, his, shook her head. And maybe that's how Joseph learned how to forgive family, when they are mean and unfair. Laban wasn't fair and nice, but Israel stayed with the family took care of Leah and the children they had together. He continued working for Laban until after Joseph was born. Then the whole family, Israel, Leah, Rachel, and all the children, went back to Israel's home. Remember that he had been away for many, many years, and because he had cheated his brother Esau, but guess what? Esau showed forgiveness for Israel, and the family was reunited again. I think families have lots of forgiveness, said Evie. That's a really good superpower to have. I think so too, said Grandpa. Bye for now. Bye, Grandpa. And then clicked off. The end. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.